Okay guys, here's the question. Can you really make power from a 305 small block Chevy? A tune port motor at that. Come on, let's take a trip back to the 80s. In this video, we're gonna take a look at some modifications to a 305 tune port small block Chevy. We're gonna run the motor stock, then we're gonna make some naturally aspirated modifications, you know, cylinder heads, camshaft, intake. Then we're gonna add some boost from a Torque Storm supercharger, because everything is better with boost. Okay, I hope you guys are ready. We're going back to the 80s. <laughs> Definitely an era of good music, but as we'll see, not a lot of performance. Although, relatively speaking, these were the hot cars for the day. This particular one was a 5-liter IROC. <laughs> yes, one of those. Uh, this was a tune port version, and I think it's an LB9, if I remember right, for the 305 tune port combination. And this was, they, they, they did have a tune port 350, but it was only available with the automatic in the Camaro. So this was, you know, not making a ton of power. On the on our engine dyno, we ran this thing the way that we normally do with a, a, a Holly HP management system, long tube headers, electric water pump and stuff. So equipped in that manner. And this thing was kind of a unique five liter. This was a really good tune port motor. And by that, I mean, this was a motor that got pulled off the assembly line, got stuck in a Chevy race shop, probably only ran the miles that it, that it did when they break this motor in before they put it in a car. So this thing was basically a time capsule 305 tune port motor. It said everything was factory fresh on it. This thing, and this thing ran fantastic like it was brand new and we tore it apart and ruined it all. We should have kept it together. And, you know, at least had somebody put it in the restoration IROC. But this 305 tune port motor produced a whopping, and I know the LS guys are gonna laugh, produce a whopping 267 horsepower. These things were not known for big power. They were known more for their torque because they have really long runner intakes on them, you know, mild cylinder heads, a small bore on the 305, and obviously mild cam timing. So this thing made peak power at 4,700 RPM and made 333 foot-pounds of torque, again, at 3,700 RPM. So this is more like a diesel motor than it is a high-performance, high-revving motor. But we didn't leave it stock, obviously. And we did this as a comparison between a, an all-80s weekend. We did this as a comparison between a 5-liter Chevy and a 5-liter Ford. So I also did all these same combinations, all these modifications, to a 5-liter Mustang engine that we had gotten from the wrecking yard. So. It was five liter against five liter, you know, full 80s weekend. And this was the Chevy version. So maybe I'll do a Ford, the Ford version of this also in another video so you guys can check that out. Here's what happened. We made the modifications to our naturally aspirated five liter tune port motor. We picked up a lot of power. That's because we added heads, cam, and intake on this combination. And when the power jumped up from 267, all the way up to 372. Torque was up obviously as well to 353 foot pounds. And we just kind of shifted everything out quite a bit. Now for this, we made some you know fairly major modifications. We changed the heads, cam, and intake. And we changed those to like the camshaft was an XR276HR cam from Comp Cams. It was a factory hydraulic roller because this was a factory hydraulic roller block. That's the way these tune port motors came, at least the later ones. We had a set of, and that camshaft had 570-565 lift split, a 218-224 degree duration split, and a 113 LSA. So it was still something that you could drive around. It was, you know, a 218-224, it's not terribly big for a uh, five liter combination. So definitely something that could be street driven all the time without any problem. We also atop this, we replaced the factory iron heads on that five liter with TFS Super 23 175 heads, which in my opinion are probably about as good as you can get for that small bore 305 combination. That Those trick flow heads are really good for that small bore combination. And they had small chambers, a 56cc chamber, a 194, 150 valve to make that stuff fit in the small in the small bore. And those heads work really well. Definitely a lot more potential there. And we have a fairly mild cam in it. This thing could make you know a lot more power with the right camshaft. For induction systems, there's a lot of stuff to choose from for small block Chevys, but we wanted to keep this kind of at least somewhat true to the, its tune port nature. 
So we installed what might be the best tune port in induction system you can put on there, and that's a Holly Stealth Ram intake. It's basically a tunnel ram with a box on top of it and a tune port throttle body on that box. So it had it had the dual throttle body. You know, this was a dual 52 millimeters. So it was bigger than the factory, obviously, to get more airflow in. We also ran this with long tube headers, just like we did with the, the factory TPI setup. And all of these modifications combined together to add more than 100 horsepower. So it worked out pretty well. Now let's take a look. And as I said, we did this also with the 5 liter Ford. And we eventually ran that with boost as well, just like we did we're going to now with this one. So these modifications did very well against the factory tune port stuff. Now let's find out what happens when we run boost. We've got a Torque Storm supercharger coming right up. Okay, we took a look at our stock tune port 5 liter IROC motor and then our modified NA combination. We jumped up from 267 to 273, but we weren't done there. I mean, that, that's a good start, and obviously, any changes we make to the NA combination are going to improve things once we add boost. But we installed a Torque Storm supercharger, which is probably sized pretty well for this combination. I mean, we weren't looking to make a thousand horsepower with this thing. And that Torque Storm Supercharger works really well for something up to you know seven, the 700 horsepower range. We also equipped the Torque Storm Supercharger with a an air to water intercooler, just because on any kind of boosted application, I really like running intercoolers with them, even at low boost. And I know that I've had people remind me, "Hey, you ran your Vortex Supercharged Mustang for 85,000 miles with no intercooler and that's absolutely true and a lot of times I would drive it around on regular pump gas on 87 octane but I wasn't getting in the throttle and making lots of boost. I, I ran it in the silver state for you know non-stop for more than a half an hour straight at wide open throttle with no intercooler but it's only at seven pounds but now I wish I would have had one because an intercooler is always better and I wish we had an E85 because I would have run E85 in it and everything would have worked out a lot better. But here's what happened when we installed our Torque Storm Supercharger on our 305 small block Chevy. And as we come to expect from supercharging, we got a big jump in power. The peak power jumped all the way up past the 600 horsepower mark. And we made six, you know, 612 or so. And peak torque checked in at 546 foot pounds, I think. Is that the highest? Yeah, 546 foot pounds. So that worked out really nice. Big gains from the supercharger. So if you had this in your Camaro and you're driving around with more than 600 horsepower, you'd probably be pretty sporty. Although obviously the answer now would be to take that thing out and and put a an, you know, an LS motor with any kind of boost in it. It would make a lot more power. But back in the day, guys were running around back in the 80s and early 90s. If you were running, and I trust me, I know because I had my five liter Mustang back then. It was a 88, I bought it in November of 87, still have it, so it's all original. So back then, if you were running around like I was with a Vortex supercharged, slightly modified five liter, and that thing probably made like, you know, 450 at the tires, or 450, yeah, 450 at the tire on a chassis dyno. You know, it was not making a ton of power, but back then it was pretty fast. I mean, that car ended up going uh, 193 miles an hour out of the Silver State, so it was pretty fast for its day. And you got to look at that in perspective. Back in the 80s, if you were, if you could run around with this kind of power, obviously they didn't have torque storms, but they did have pro. They did have uh, back then they had Paxtons and Vortex, so you could run around with a kind of supercharger kit with this deal on there. And with these, these kind of modifications, you know, you'd be pretty sporty. Obviously, you could also set this thing up to a 383 or whatever you wanted. So there was plenty of opportunity back then. But this was a good combination. I'll go ahead and put the um, peak boost. As a matter of fact, I'll show you what the beginning boost was and the end boost was. So you can take a look at that. It's not a lot of boost. Uh, so you could certainly run this thing around on the street without any problem. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys. What did you think about the modifications to our 5-liter Tuneport small block Chevy. Now sure, I know 230 horsepower 
might not seem like much, especially in today's world. But back then, it was pretty powerful. I mean, today we got motors making more than double that. Some supercharged motors making triple that. But back in the day, if you had a mullet and an IROC and a tune port motor, especially one with a supercharger, you were something special. The only question now is, did this combination make more power than the five liter Ford that I made the same mods to? That video will be coming out later. Thanks for watching guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. I'll keep testing.